that I think the residents of Hull Road and, and, and many more would be expecting. And certainly when um, we see planning applications coming forward, it's the constraints on the University of York um, to do that. But at the same time, uh, and, and, and to slightly take issue with, um, uh, with Councillor Waters, um, is the university also needs to be able to expand its research because by, in, in that respect, it will bring those higher paid jobs and, 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 and that will impact on um, the overall housing affordability. Um, but yes, it does need to do that because if you see what um, Oxford, for example, and you, and you made reference to Oxford on Tuesday, but Oxford's, um, Oxford's policy in respect of where off-campus accommodation should be, it is geographically um, contained in certain, in, in certain areas. We, we've heard about Bath. Um, I haven't looked at Bath's local plan, I have to be honest, but I did look at Oxford's in, 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 and, and Cambridge's in, in some detail. Um, but the impact on, um, on communities of um, PBSA is that, and, and I think somebody made reference to it, I can't quite remember um, whether it was yourselves or, 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 or the two barristers, is that it, it does impact on general needs housing um, and or on employment land. And what we've seen on the planning committee um, is application after application after application, which has been granted, of former employment land um, that's now been converted. Alton Cars has been referenced, the Mecca Bingo, um, a set of offices were, were gone. We've lost um, a carpet warehouse. And those are just the ones I can think of over the last 18 months. Um, and, there, and I'm sure there, there, there are others that I've forgotten. Uh, and, and what that does is it takes, those, it, it takes those businesses potentially out of the city altogether um, or to the outskirts of the city, which then involves a, a further commute and, and all the rest of it. You know, there's a point in having city centre businesses, and that is because they're convenient for people. <laughs> you know, if you have to schlep all the way out to um, Clifton Moor, um, it, it impacts on journey times and all, and all the rest of it. So, if you keep building on valuable brownfield sites, PBSA, that does have an impact both on communities, um, on, on the communities of Fulford, on the communities of Fishergate, on the communities in Guildhall, um, but also it impacts on businesses as well. And I'm sure there was more I could have thought of, but I'll leave it at that. But again, is, is your so solution um, to, that, to that issue, to, to limit it to campus? Wherever possible, and I, th and I think you, you talked about the flexibility of, um, uh, of, of, of being able to build off campus, and yeah, there, there may be some um, requirement to build off campus. My first preference would be for the university to build on campus. Um, that would certainly impact on, on, on the neighbourhoods and, 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 the, and the wards that surround the University of York. However, um, there will always be some demand, notwithstanding the uh, amount that we've seen coming on stream that haven't been built yet, um, uh, is, is when, when that does happen, um, that yes, that I think there needs to be an affordable housing contribution as Oxford, um, as, as Oxford have imposed, um, but um, it needs to be in, in, a, in a tight geographic area rather than a piecemeal um, developer will buy up a piece of land um, or a, a business um, and what's he going to what's he going to throw up there he's going to throw up PBSA because that's that's where the that's where the big money is it's not in general needs housing thank you uh, Mr Jeffery I'm, go I'm going to come to you Thank you very much indeed. Um, 
I, I think all this shows that we need a local plan um, in which we can balance the various pressures that we are, we are hearing about and, and do it in uh, a measured and strategic uh, way. I, I did want to make a couple of points in relation to the issues raised. Um, we do set uh, a lot of stock in being good neighbours and we work very, very closely with Councillor Pavlovic in uh, a number of, uh, of expressions of this which I think are working very well. So I wouldn't like the hearing to have the impression that we are not good neighbours. But I also wanted to make a, a, a wider point, uh, which is about the, the dual mission of the university around research and teaching, which, which intersect, they're, they're coexistent with one another, uh, and make the point that with the city council, with the support of the city council, in alliance with the city council, uh, we uh, are at the heart of an economic development program for the region, which is set out in the devolution deal proposals, which we are currently negotiating with whoever the minister may currently be uh, in, in Whitehall. Uh, we are working very closely with the City Council to, to think through the opportunities of the York Central site and the ways in which uh, some of our capability might be deployed there. Uh, we are central to the bid led by the City Council to host uh, Great British Railways in York, which is now out for public vote. So if you haven't yet voted, please, uh, please do. Uh, we are working with the City Council and the local NHS to think about how the new integrated care system structure uh, can produce real additional tangible uh, benefits to, uh, to people in, uh, in York uh, and beyond. Now that is all fundamentally dependent on two things. It's dependent on the quality of our research, which is opening up those opportunities, and the contribution of our graduates, more of whom we would love to keep here um, and have the opportunities for them to go into high productivity, high skill jobs, which is what our research capability opens up. So the, a, a careful set of balances we need uh, to think about, about the kind of benefit uh, the university brings, which in all sorts of respects is hugely endorsed and mobilised by the City Council. Thank you. C can I just add a couple of references, if, if I may, um, uh, sirs? The points have been ra raised about what was set out by the inspector on the last occasion. Um, the issue of the 106 is discussed at paragraph 679 of the uh, decision and then uh, discussed by the Secretary of State in the decision at uh, paragraph 27, um, essentially the aspiration being to accommodate the increase in students arising from Campus East on Campus East, two caveats in relation to that, one of which is expressed within the decision itself, i.e. subject to economic uh, 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 appropriateness. That includes within it not simply the finances, but also the balance of land uses which are considered to be appropriate, the matters that the Vice-Chancellor has just raised. Um, the second point as well is that there is no compulsion in accommodation. We don't live in a command economy and therefore it's facilitating those who wish to live on campus. Uh, there is a significant proportion who choose not to do so, uh, particularly after first year. Um, that's the first series of references. Um, the, the second uh, reference is picking up uh, Councillor Waters' point about the glass pouring over the table. Um, the, the, there is no equivocation in the plan. Uh, there is nothing between the City of York and my clients, all three of my clients today, that their continued success and development is intended to be supported by the plan, not constrained by the plan. You get that for the University of York at paragraph 7.1 and paragraph 1.58 of the recent justification. That this is not a plan intended to be founded upon stopping pouring the water and letting the water go to some other location. It's intended upon continued growth improvement for the success of the city, the region and beyond. Thank you. Okay. Properly, I should come to Mr. Elvin then. Yeah, a number of points. Uh, firstly, um, um, I agree with what Mr. Tucker and the Vice-Chancellor have said that it's not the role of the local plan or indeed planning to constrain the growth of higher education. That's a matter for higher government policy, assuming we have ministers in the Department of Education, etc. 
which we didn't last week. Um, but it, it, more seriously, it, it, it's like the market price of housing. It's not within the control of, of the planning system. And we have to balance the various needs and pressures on space. As you know full well, that is what the plan and the plan-led system is about. We have controls imposed through the Article 4 direction, which is detailed in our hearing statement. Uh, the HMO's restriction in H8, which of course, uh, when it is development plan policy, gives the uh, local authority much greater control over such matters. And we have the criteria base in H7, and the need issue, which we'll be clarifying, we'll be looking at precisely uh, these matters, as I indicated earlier. And as I agreed in principle with um, Mr. Tucker earlier, the, the policies will make it clear there will be a, a, a favouring of a, or a presumption of on-campus provision first, but H8 will then set out the criteria which will include um, uh, uh, need, as, as you know, and amenity and other factors, which will take account of other uh, uh, justifying uh, the, the expansion uh, off-site. So there will be a whole series of additional controls, not uh, not least, as I say, H8 and H7. Um, in terms of the, uh, I was going to refer you to the um, 2007 decision. You'll find I submitted that earlier in the week. It's uh, document EX other 25. So you've got the Secretary of State's decision letters and the uh, full inspector's report there. Thank you. I should say, I'm not, I'm not seeking to downplay any of the concerns, but we have to balance them. And the balance can't come with somehow suppressing uh, higher education in some way which is not available to us in the planning system. Thank you, Mr. Alvin. Go on. Thank you, sir. <coughs> I do find it um, slightly disturbing that both of the barristers don't see that there is any constraint to this... Um, continued expansion. Um, perhaps we will we'll cover that better in September, whether the expansion can be accommodated on site with a, a reallocation of actual developable land. Uh, can, Councillor, don't, don't worry. I'm not suggesting it shouldn't be controlled, believe me. And that's one of the matters I intend to raise in September. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody, after Mr Tucker referred to um, Secretary of State's decision and paragraph 27, um, you two inspectors probably know this paragraph off by heart, but I'd just like to read the last sentence. That the proposed new campus should not significantly alter any adverse effects that the local community may experience as a result of the presence of the university. I'll expand on that and the adverse effects when we discuss H8. Thank you. I did want to say we will, we will talk about H8 because I'm, I'm obviously aware of the representations that have been made about that policy. We will be coming on to that in, in detail. Mr Merritt, did you have something you wanted to, to contribute? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, you know, I absolutely echo the importance and, uh, and support the Vice-Chancellor's comment about the economic uh, importance and the wider social uh, benefits that the university uh, brings to the city uh, you know, and, and hopefully will continue to do so in an even bigger way in the future. So uh, we're certainly not uh, in support of arguments for constraining uh, the ability of the university to, to expand. But that expansion has to be done responsibly, and that includes helping the city address the housing and consequences in a responsible manner, and not just uh, expecting the rest of the city to pay a, pro a housing price uh, for the university's expansion. Um, but I, I just wanted to come back more specifically uh, on, uh, it was one of the points I meant to raise earlier and, and couldn't <laughs> slip my mind. The, the issue about the deletion of the reference to the economically um, appropriate. I thank Mr. Tucker for reminding us of the inspector's decision, and that wasn't just what the words, in, uh, you know, the obvious implication of the words, it was also about the impact 
on land uses in the city. I think it would be unfortunate if by deleting the current reference, uh, in effect, we weakened the ability to do that. So rather than uh, deletion, I'd like to suggest that perhaps some rephrasing that particularly highlights the issue of the need to balance the impact on land uses and land availability in the city, uh, as per the inspector's uh, re report, was retained in that uh, in, in the ED one and the other in the other location. Um, that's that's a matter that the council is is undertaking to to consider. Ms. Hilton. Thank you. Um, Heslington Parish contains all of the University of York, apart from a few um, city centre premises and some, some off-campus um, initiatives. Um, so we are very much neighbours, and um, obviously they're very important to York, and they're good neighbours in some ways, and that they bring some commerce into the village and some jobs, but there are also obviously difficulties. I just really wanted to pick up briefly on what councillors Walters and Pavlovich said about increasing the intensity of development on campus east. I think um, we, the parish council of Heslington very much supports that uh, purpose-built student accommodation should be on the campus of the University of York. Um, we, we have a number of HMOs in our village, as you would expect, and we also have purpose-built student accommodation in our village, which is um, provided by the university, but it is at an extreme distance from the campuses, as far as you can get through the village. And uh, I'd like to say later about some of the issues that arise from that. So we are very much in favour of student accommodation being on campus. But I wouldn't want to think that we could support student accommodation being built on campus east, increasing the density of the building there, and also have the university expand into greenfield and green belt areas. I think what we would support is that in general, all of the university expansion, student accommodation and other needs should be within the campus area. That, the campus east, what was the farmland, has already been completely despoiled by the, by the building of campus east. By the lighting, by the, by the type of building, it's, it's a completely different entity. So we would think that perhaps making that a more intensively built area and preserve the absolute boundaries of the campus. I'm, I'm not trying to stray into yesterday's matter, but I'm just, I don't want to end up with saying, oh yes, increase student accommodation on campus east and also expand, because we would think it has to be one or the other. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Keir. Thank you, sir. Just in terms of the uh, question of need, I've sort of rolled questions 1.1 and 1.2 in together in, in um, my statement, as have others. Uh, so just a few simple points that I'd like to highlight, um, slightly different to some of the other points that have been made thus far. Um, in terms of need, I, I think the starting point is for me, I went back and looked at the Shema, the 2016 Shema, that was the starting point for the housing figures, and it makes no allowance for any student accommodation in, in, the, in the figures. In fact, the, at that time, the Shema concluded um, there wasn't any need for additional student accommodation and therefore made no allowance for that in the, in the Shema figures. The need identified in the Shema in 2016 was pre predominantly for two and three bed family housing. Um, and the subsequent updates of the Shema, and I, I would need to interrogate the latest update, which I said uh, on Tuesday I hadn't had a chance to go through in any detail, but subsequent updates of the Shema didn't, haven't addressed and uh, it haven't returned to the issue of um, uh, student housing. And of course that's then sort of confirmed in the, in the council statement that paragraph 3.1.3 
where they acknowledge that the need for student housing um, will be determined by the level of student growth planned for by the individual universities over and above that plan for through the objectively assessed housing need. And then it goes on to say that the OAN does not specifically identify a need for student housing. The issue that I and several others, uh, such as Stantec and, and Quad and, and maybe some others as well have taken issue with, is that although the need is not identified in, in the housing figures, in the housing requirement in the local plan, there's a considerable amount of student housing included within the housing supply calculations. Um, both um, during the plan period and in, both in, in, in determining the, the backlog. Um, and what we're saying is that this then has a, has a, a distorting effect on um, uh, the housing market. The, the guidance, um, national planning guidance, does of course say that you can include an allowance for student housing in your, in your supply where there's evidence that the student housing is releasing general market housing back into, uh, housing back into the market. But again, we have no evidence of, of that. Um, again, to go back to the point, and I'll just briefly mention the points we, we touched on on Tuesday, which of course, has, and has been mentioned already, student housing completions don't contribute any, uh, any, anything to the affordable housing supply. Uh, my figures in my table two, uh, looking at the, at the period 2012, 2017 and 2017 local plan period onwards, um, my calculations um, indicate that there's a, a, about 1,400 student units in the, in the supply figures there and the trajectory provided by the council in the last few weeks uh, is indicating another 539. So you're looking at about two and a half to three years supply uh, of housing supply being accounted for purely by, by student completions, again with no, as I said, corresponding con contribution to affordable housing. And of course there's the double whammy, which others have referred to, is that many of the, of the PBSA sites um, in um, uh, take up land that would otherwise go for, for general market housing. Um, we're not actually making a case, any case against PBSA, all we're saying is that there needs to be uh, a balance taken and a, and a corresponding adjustment made to housing supply or to, to housing land supply uh, and not to uh, use up, essentially use up housing land supply by including student uh, numbers. As I said in my paper, the, the issue of student housing, it might not be such an issue if we didn't have uh, such a high level of student completions in the supply figures relative to the OAN and also if there wasn't such a reliance on other sources of supply not delivering any affordable housing such as the high reliance on, on windfalls. And so the overall conclusion um, that I come to shared by others is that the um, inclusion of student housing in the completion figures um, suppresses the delivery of uh, general market housing uh, and it's not meeting the needs identified in the Shema primarily for family housing, for two and three bed family housing. And for those reasons we say uh, the student completions should not be included in the housing supply calculations. Uh, I'm, I mean, we've, we've covered quite a lot of, lots of ground already. I, I'm, I'm going to suggest we have a, have a break now so we can, um, I can get some clarity of thought about what we've, what we've heard and, and perhaps when we, when we come back we can address any, any points that are, that are remaining. So I'm, I've got 10 past 11 or just past that. We'll, we'll resume at half past. Until then, uh, thanks. And so, given that Mr. Coakley has been sitting here in eager anticipation, ready to say his bit, is it, would we be starting off with Mr. Coakley's part on for University of York St. John? Once, once we've dealt with anything that's residual from, from what we've just heard, yes, I'll, I'll come to you, I promise. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Until 11.30. <laughs>